The third annual Atari Homebrew Awards, celebrating the best in Atari Homebrew. Brought to you by Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari 2600 and 7800 games. Streaming news, reviews, interviews, and Atari 2600, 7800 homebrews on Twitch and YouTube. Atari Age, Atari console database, classic gaming news, active discussion forums, store for new homebrew games, and more. Argon. Argon lets you play games from your own collection, as well as from the ever-expanding library of classic games and homebrew hits. And the Atari 2600 Homebrew Companion, a fun-to-read line of books with historically important information on a wide array of homebrew titles, now available in digital and physical formats. Hello and welcome, finally to the third annual Atari Homebrew Awards, where we honor the best homebrew of 2020, of last year. Welcome. I'm James O'Brien. Uh, I'm Tanya. <laughs> and Erilyn is behind the camera. Unfortunately, he won't be making an appearance. He has to man everything, We're trying to keep the population in this house low. Yeah. Hopefully everything is working and streaming and we look good and the background looks good. Let's see. Hooray! Woo! <laughs> look at the host. Yay, they see us. <laughs> That's great. That's Step really one. Good. Step one. Yeah. Um, so first off, I want to thank all the sponsors uh, for making this show happen. Zero Page Homebrew. They're the best. They're awesome. <laughs> We're Zero Page Homebrew. Yeah. Um, and uh, also Al from Atari Age, who we're going to be seeing later on mm -hmm. uh, via video. And also the team over at Argon, who also we're going to be talking to a little bit later. Awesome. And Brian Mather, who unfortunately uh, is not able to be with us because he's working today. Oh, no. Which sucks. He really tried to get here, but uh, yeah. he wasn't able to make it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I want to thank everybody who um, made a game this year as well. We had a lot of games to play this year. Whoa, it was, a lot it of was, games yeah, throughout it, the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're kind of locked down, so that means that we were able to play lots of games. We were. We <laughs> lots were. of time. Not, I, not a lot of time outside the house. No, no. And I got a lot of time this year to play games because... Yes, uh, because nobody was out, allowed no in the house. Nobody was allowed in the house. So. Just the cats yeah. and us yeah. and you guys who watched throughout the year. Yeah. And there was a lot of games made this year. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, and I want to thank all the, the homebrew community as well for mm -hmm. watching and you know supporting the show and watching the show and encouraging us and uh yeah thank you everybody so about this year we've increased the number of categories from last year we had nine categories to this year we have 15. that's a lot of categories 15 categories <laughs> oh my god it took a long time to make all the videos you're about to see because mm -hmm. if you think about okay how many games multiply by how many voiceovers by how many videos and all the movements and 15 categories? Oh my god. Almost made me want to give up. But I didn't. Yeah. Um, so we cover Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Atari 7800, and Atari 8-bit games in, in, these award show, in this award show. This is the third year running. So it's going good <laughs> so far. Um, and we've also expanded the ports uh, to ports in the 2600 categories because we, before that, in the first and second years, we had the 2600 games all together. With the ports. The ports yeah. and originals together. And this year we decided, you know, we want to let each of them shine. Mm -hmm. um, have the originals and the ports separate. And, um, and we've also added a work in progress to the Atari 7800 category. Which is exciting. It's exciting. It's what's up and coming. So. It is. There was a lot of games made for the Atari 7800 this past year, mm -hmm. and a lot more are going to be made this year because of two SD cart-based cartridges. Mm. SD card-based cartridges. Yeah. Um, the Concerto and the Dragonfly. So I think it'll be a lot easier for development um, for people to be able to make the games and be able to play the games without, you know, using emulation or uh, waiting to buy the cartridge. Um, so just a little breakdown of how the 2600 categories are. We've broken it down into work in progress, which are games that are not done, but they're in the process of being done, and completed games, which are finished, done, stamped, 
Out not, the door. Out the door, not going to be Had updated. enough of it, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they're minorly updated. Yeah. There's like bugs, but they're like, no, everything is in there. Mm. Oh, I hope these earpieces don't fall out all the time. It's being annoying. Um, and also, we've this year we've um, separated them to, into ports and original games. Mm -hmm. So ports are, you know, like a remake or, you know, an adaption from an arcade game mm -hmm. or a port over from another console or a computer system just anything that was made before yeah it's not then. an original concept game that's right yeah and then we have the originals which is out of somebody's head yeah and they've made all the different parts out of their head yeah um and then plus we have categories for best packaging yeah best graphics mm -hmm. and best music and sound we'll get into those as we break down the categories um so a little stats because stats are fun the number of games nominated this year yeah 52 games wow. across 14 game categories. Wow. Um, because also the 15th category is, um, let's forget the name of it, Lifetime Achievement Award. And we'll get to the explanation of that later. Mm -hmm. But 52 games. So I had to individually play, record. You had to record the voiceovers for 52 That's games. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and the total games evaluated this year that came out. Um, were two for the 5200, not very many. That's why we combined it with the 8-bit games, because mm -hmm. they're both similar platforms. 36 games for the 7800. Wow. Uh, 89 games for the 8-bit systems. Wow. And 140 for the 2600. Wow. Well, <laughs> and the nomination committees that narrowed it down from these to these six that, you're, that everybody voted on um, had to play and evaluate all of these games. Wow. And I'm going to thank them later in the show, mm -hmm. because they did a lot of work. And they helped out a lot. And big news, we're going to be adding Atari Lynx next year, which is an Atari handheld. It came oh, out a long cool. time ago. Yeah. But the homebrew scene for that is quite decent. Mm -hmm. So there's enough being made that uh, we can put it into the competition. That's so very that's cool. uh, very exciting. Mm -hmm. How's our chat doing? Oh, this little... it's, it's, it's okay here. It's okay there? Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's your laptop. My laptop keeps pausing. The um, so we're going to be taking a look at the work in progress games for the all the different systems first. And uh, first up is the Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Original Game. And that's Erlen's. Oh, he hasn't got it queued up. We'll get there. Okay, <laughs> so here we go. This is the Best Work in Progress Original Game for Atari 2600. Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Original Egg Venture 2600 by Ural Silks Night Guy in Low Res World Castle Days by Vladimir Zuniga. Peril by Vladimir Zuniga. Quantum Tunnel by Jared Gray West Save Gaia the Simage by Michael Brown by Quahog. All right, so for Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Homebrew Original. In third place, Quantum Tunnel by Jared Gray West. In second place, 
Tapamol by Quahog. And winner, Night Guy and Low Res World Castle Days by Vladimir Zuniga. Woohoo! Good job! And we have a written statement from Vladimir Zuniga. Uh, he says, Thanks for the award, people. Since I started to program Homebrew three years ago, every time I start a game project, and I've started a few, that's an understatement. A vast understatement. Uh, my main goal, more than uh, making big technical feats, is to make games that are challenging but fair, with a variety of mechanics and an attractive visual presentation. Hoping that the mix would make a game with my own recognizable style, and that people will enjoy playing as much as I enjoyed developing it. This award makes me think that maybe, at least with this game, I'm achieving that goal, and apparently there are people out there that actually enjoy my work, and that's really cool. <laughs> Uh, VHZC makes incredible games. Mm. They're so much fun, and he's such a great... Uh, he does it all himself. I'll just give a little background. Mm. VHZC, he does everything. Mm. The programming, the graphics, the music. He does his own box art. He does everything you see in a VHZC game it's is amazing. VHZC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's his online handle, Vla Vladimir. Yeah. Um, so uh, congratulations, yes. Vladimir. Uh, well, well deserved, well earned. Um, and that was for Best uh, Work in Progress original. So he's still working on Night Guy and Low Res World, Castle Days. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see it uh, maybe again. Maybe next year. Next year. year. Yeah, um, in the final version. And uh, he, I don't think he does any ports. All of his games are originals. So mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so the next category is uh, Atari 2600, Best Work in Progress port so these are a port of an existing game mm -hmm. so let's take a look at the nomination atari 2600 best work in progress port fool's gold by dion olsthorn Frantic by Daryl Spice Jr. Gorf Arcade by John Champeau, Coding and Design, Nathan Strum, Graphics and Voice, and Ross Keenum, Music and Sounds. Robot War 2684 by John Champeau and Nathan Strum Graphics. Space Invaders Arcade by Thomas Yench. Devious by Chris Walton, Programming, and Nathan Strum, Graphics. Okay, and for third place, Tower of Rubble by Dion Osthorn. In second place, Pit Cat by Marco Johannes and Die Fed Hitchings. Hitchings, yes. And the winner is, for Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Port. Do I have this right? This is not the correct envelope. Work in progress? They are out of order. Excuse me. People Ooh. are very confused. I won't blame anyone. Okay. <laughs> They're like, those weren't in the video. Okay. In third place, uh, Night Guy. That's good I didn't announce the winner. Was... Which is it the work in progress? Oh, this is not nope. even the right one there. There. Thank you very much. Oh. Got Ooh. flipped. Live. <laughs> <sighs> Gonna have okay. an Oscars issue again. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> 
you, you, you grab the next one. Yeah. yeah, we won't announce the wrong winner. Yeah. We'll just announce them out of order. Yes. Uh, in third place, Robot War 2684 by John Champeau. In second place, Gorf Arcade by John Champeau. And in first place, the winner of the Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Homebrew Port, Xevious by Chris Walton. Hooray! Hey guys, I'm Chris Walton, also known as CD-W on the Atari Age website. And I just found out that my game Xevious has won the Best Work in Progress Port category at the 2020 Homebrew Awards. Um, I'm amazed and delighted by this. Um, I'm really glad that you guys enjoyed playing my game and I'm really surprised because there was some amazing competition this year um, across all the categories. Now, I can't take full credit for this. Uh, Nathan Strum did an amazing uh, job on the artwork for the Xevious game. And I also had quite a bit of help from Thomas Jentsch uh, compressing all the data in to fit it into memory. Um, I should just say a bit about why I implemented Xevious in the first place. So I'm a huge fan of the shoot 'em up genre, and I wanted to implement a worthy successor to Juno first, which is one of my early homebrew games. And uh, I chose Xevious, and I had two or three different attempts to implement Xevious before I found a nice way to do the scrolling background. Um, and it just kind of snowballed from there. Also, the COVID uh, situation this year has given me a lot more free time than I've had for a while. And so I had uh, plenty of time to work on this Atari you see behind me, uh, implementing the game uh, on the Harmony cartridge. Now, uh, you may not know, but the version of Xevious that I've implemented is based on the Atari 7800 version. So um, somebody uh, rescued the source code uh, for the Atari 7800 version from a dumpster behind the Atari buildings when they were clearing out. The original game was written back in 1983. And they uploaded this source code onto the internet, and I took that source code as the basis for the uh, 2600 version. Um, I actually converted it into C, and I made a whole bunch of improvements for the 2600 version, but it is essentially underneath the 7800 version. Um, so I must apologize for the length of time it's taking to get the game out. Um, I haven't up uploaded any more versions since the in initial work in progress version. And the reason for that is it's kind of run out of memory. So I've been working with, to uh, with Fred Quimby, sorry, um, to implement a larger version of the Harmony cartridge so that we can expand the game uh, and include all the features that I want to put in there. Um, rest assured, the Andor Genesis mothership will definitely be in the final game. I also want some cool music in there and various other bits of polish. So I'm hoping to get the game released in 2021 for everyone to, to enjoy. Anyway, I'll wrap up there. I just want to say thanks again to James uh, for organizing the homebrew competition. Uh, thanks to his hard work and his awesome uh, zero page homebrew channel. Um, yeah, I had great fun and thanks everyone for participating. All the best. Congra Congratulations, Chris. And we're gonna go to Al from Atari Age, one of the sponsors of this year's uh, award show. And hopefully this all works. We've got him on the line. And can we hear you? Al. Well, it sounds like crackly garbage, unfortunately. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, we can't hear him, but I think it's going through. Oh, let me just check something, please. Stand by. <laughs> oh no, it is set correctly. I have no idea how we're going to do this. Is it terrible? Oh no. Technical difficulties. No. Crackly audio. Al needs higher upstream. No. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is pretty important. So we're going to try and get this working.
might be the HDMI. There we go. Oh my goodness. Al, are you here? Are you with us? Let's pause. Oh. I unplugged it so we could hear it on the laptop. That's why. How are we going to do this? Please stand by, people. <laughs> the laptop. Yeah, then we don't have video. No, but pick it up on the mic. Just audio? Yeah. Yeah. That's... Probably your best option. <laughs> yeah. Check, check, check. Say something, Al, again. <laughs> well, that's something. Okay, we're going to have to do something else. Oh, he's got something holding up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to unplug and we're going to go audio only. Okay, Al, one second. Can you hear us? Can we hear you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. There we go. So we have audio at least. That's good. What the heck? <laughs> That's really, really weird. It's not outputting the audio through the HDMI cable. Whew. But you are here. Thank you for joining us, Al. And thank you for sponsoring the uh, awards show. You're welcome. And thank you for doing most of the legwork and getting this running and doing it for three years in a row now. <laughs> Mostly running. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So the, the award show extensively uses the Atari Age Forum for the voting, for the organizing, and of course, most of every single homebrew that are on this show tonight uh, is developed and like through the Atari Age Forums. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on in public and behind the scenes. So it, it's such an essential part of the development of all these Atari homebrews. Yeah, it's uh, oh, I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me still? Check, check, one, two. Yes, I can. Okay, it's good. That, it's good Excellent. So, yeah, so thank you for maintaining the, the forums because if, if you look at what Al posts in the forums, he's constantly on there uh, monitoring and watching and making sure it's all running and upgrading the forums all the time. And, and besides that, there's also uh, an extensive store where a lot of Atari homebrews uh, are sold through. So that's also uh, a, an incredible resource for developers and for people who buy homebrew games. So thank you so much, Al. Oh, I missed the very last bit of that. <laughs> I was just thanking you. Um, okay. So you've got yeah, some... Yeah, yeah prizes for the winners uh, for tonight, for, for the winners, a variety of prizes. I think our connection is cutting out. Now I know what you're saying, unfortunately. Oh, no. Um, 
Prizes. Talk talk about the prizes. Okay, okay I can do that. <laughs> uh, so the prizes are uh, Atari Junior uh, Crazy Climber a while back did these nice aluminum design metal and that composite material on them as well. Uh, and I haven't sold them or anything like that. I've just been giving them away very slowly. And I'm going to give five of these away to the top five categories as selected by uh, Zero Pay Homebrew. Uh, and you can hang on a wall, do a lot of different things with them. And again, you can't get those anywhere else. I've got pint glasses, Atari pint glasses, which I have given out to a bunch of There's again, not available in the Atari. Uh, and I would ask you, I was going to show them on the screen to do that. Uh, in addition to the pint glasses, uh, also going to give away gift certificates uh, to all the winners in the, in the, uh, uh, in this competition. Yeah, I'll probably leave those things too. Is there anything else besides those three items? I think that's that all I the, told you about. I think that's everything. The pint glasses, the yeah. metal signs, the Atari age signs, and yeah. the gift certificates. I think that's everything. Um, yeah. And maybe maybe some other things if you find them. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have other things. I'll probably do my fault in with packages when I send them out. Yeah. Excellent. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. And we do, all the voting was done on the Atari Age forums as well. Um, and it, and it worked perfectly smooth. It was, it was awesome. And so thank, thank you yeah, for, was, for everything. And you're welcome. And, uh, I mean, it's great to see that the homebrew, uh, the forums have become, uh, uh, you know, a center activity for, uh, homebrew development across a variety of systems, not just the Atari system too, there's a lot of TI-99 for a homebrew development system. Uh, and, you know, Atari, Atari on computer is just an enormous amount of development as you found out the, the number, sheer number of titles. Uh, so, I mean, I'd love to see that. It's great to see all that happen on the forum. Uh, and you being able to publish a lot of these games physical forum. And I actually have, but I was, one of the things I was going to show off in the stream is I have all the boxes uh, for most of these games that are being reprinted uh, due to the errors in the printer's part. But I have them all right here in my hand. <laughs> I'm going to show them on the screen. So maybe later on, if we can get the, uh, if, the if you can get the, the video working better uh, for the callers, uh, we can do that again. Mm. it again. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that, and maybe we can come back to you and show off the boxes. That'll be really exciting. Actually, you can you can see in your stream if you can see that. <laughs> I could turn around the laptop. Uh, uh, oh, you just turn around. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, uh, yeah so I'll I'll stay online and, and if, you know in the call or during the stream, you want to call me again. Please feel free. Yeah, that's that'd, that'd be excellent. Yeah, thank you so much, Al. But again, congratulations to anyone who was either nominated uh, or won it for Will or on the bar. Uh, and it's really exciting uh, to see all the votes being voted and, you know, to see who was nominated and, and, you know, who's coming in third, second, and first place. And next year it's going to be just as exciting because there's a ton of development taking place on all these systems and adding a link, you said, which is, you know, pretty active uh, homebrew development. System. And then if we could do the Jaguar, push for the Jaguar too, maybe, you know, in 2023. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, uh, we're going to uh, let you go. And we'll probably, right. we'll, if we get the uh, video and audio fixed for this feed, we'll definitely come back to you so we can see the boxes. Okay, sounds good. Okay, talk to you soon. Right. Bye, Al. The rest of the yep. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye bye. So we might take a, a break later on to see if we can fix that. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we can, because it's pretty essential to... If uh, I reboot the computer, will all the people you have lined up? Um, nope, it'll be fine. I think I should reboot, reboot it, because I yes, think there's some issues Yes, you should. Because so. um, that might fix the HDMI output. I think it might. Because it was, it was janky. It's having out. more than one issue, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It might, it might fix a whole host of problems there. Yeah. Well, I would, uh, yeah, save that first. Yeah, yeah, no, I can do that. Okay, so the next, not to uh, delay it much longer, <laughs> <laughs> she can do that. Uh, so the next award up is Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress, which is actually a, a new category because last year um, uh, we added the 7800 because first year was for only 2600. Uh, games. Then we added 7800 and 8 bit as well. Um, but it has really picked up in the 7800 uh, development. And so 
we added best work in progress uh, to 7800 as well because there were so many new great games coming out and even more so in 2021. So I can't wait to see what games are coming up for that. So let's get to the nominees for Atari 7800 best work in progress. Atari 7800 Work in Progress Homebrew. A Roach in Space 2 Cosmic Bugaloo by Vladimir Zuniga. EXO by Lewis Hill. Night Guy in Low Res, Castle Days, by Vladimir Zuniga. Night Guy on Board, 30 Squares of Fate, by Vladimir Zuniga. Popeye 7800 by Daryl Genther. Programming and Graphics Bobby Clark, Matt Smith, Pat Brady, and Trevor, Music and Sound Effects, and Atari 2600 Boy, Package Artwork. Spire of the Ancients by BHB Smith. And we're back and we're trying to get things going so that we can get the next award winner on the line. So just give us a second here and we'll make sure we are connected up. Try to connect to, oh, just stay downstairs for a second. Downstairs. Yeah, the upstairs isn't working. Um, so, in third place for Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Homebrew, Night Guy in Low Res World Castle Days by Vladimir Zuniga. In second place, EXO by Lewis Hill. I think I've read this before. <laughs> and the winner for Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Homebrew is Popeye 7800 by Daryl Genther. Congratulations. Yay, good job. So, oh, and uh, we're going to Try and get him on the line now. Test number two. Yep, uh, so hopefully this connects up. Oh, that's a good sign there. And what are we connected to? Oh, that looks slow. Let's try, let's try connecting up here. It's the end. And see if our router is working. Yes, it is. Okay, here we go. Uh, wish us luck with the sound. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that yeah. it's not just uh, bzz, bzz, bzz. So we'll see if we can talk with Daryl here. Oh, it's actually going full screen properly. Yay! Daryl, can we hear you? No, we can't. <laughs> that sucks. So rebooting the computer did nothing at all. <laughs> I'm going to unplug it from my recording computer okay. now and see if that works. Unlikely. Well, it certainly looks a lot better, but it doesn't sound any better, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, uh, no, it's still nothing. 
Let me uh, you switch back away from this. I'm going to check the audio settings on this. You know what? I may be able to do this. It may be out of sync. Okay, Daryl, can you say something? Yeah. Okay, this is a great workaround, actually. You may be out of sync for the viewers, but we can hear and see you. <laughs> and it's crystal clear. So I okay. think we're going to go with this for now, because I don't think I can solve the buzzy problem. No. Congratulations, Daryl. What Thank an accomplishment, you. especially given where this game came from. If you can talk a little bit about that. Oh, well, uh, in the beginning, I started around August 15th. Can you hear me okay? It's excellent. Yeah. Okay, great. So around August 15th, um, I downloaded the Visual Studio Code environment that had uh, Rev, MK Smith set it up and Revang uh, created the 7800 Basic, make everything possible. And, and I had no idea how the 7800 hardware worked. So I wanted to try it out, and I wanted to plot a Brutus script on the screen. So I did that, and then I got him to move. And then after that, I decided, well, maybe I need to add a Popeye on the screen so you can jump up and try to get him, and I can do some animation. And the next thing you know, I'm trying to plot a board, and then the mini game came up, and, and that's that's how I got to this point. Um, there was um, who was it? It was Muddy Funster. And Trevor yeah. you kind of, you know, talked about it in the forums. And then you picked it up on Zero Page Homebrew. Yeah. And I thought, oh, no, they're, they're just going to tear this apart. <laughs> Popeye, what is this? And just, you know, everybody here gave such great, um, you know, had nice things to say about it. It was just awesome. So, you know, I continued on and uh, played soft who I've done a lot of hacks with, you know, I got to thank him because if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be around because he made some of the graphic hacks that I've done mm. possible. Yeah. And, the, and, and that's what kept me around. And, and uh, of course, Revang and my, MP Smith, I mentioned. Uh, Sedell Man asked at one point, will the Sea Hag make an appearance? <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm the shake of my head like, no, I don't have anything left. You know? <laughs> <laughs> do. Yes, you do. You've got all these variables to work with. And, all this RAM and Rev Eng comes in and says something and and uh, uh, Synth Papaloos on the thirtieth of August says, Well I better make some TIA music or some poker music. <laughs> uh, oh now I'm gonna let people down if I don't keep going. And yeah. then Pat Brady started brainstorming music with Bobby and Trevor started collecting music samples. Uh, he's he's still testing it to this day, going strong with the testing. Wow. Um, thanks to Batari for making the 144k pokey cart work with the concerto enough that i could see it on real hardware again with the pokey sound um s ramirez has been doing some testing 2008 doing some testing giving great <laughs> feedback uh temp 392 jumped in when things were like really um getting rough yeah there were some issues and playsoft jumped back in they did some debugging deep in the in the code to, to find some issues with the pokey sound and then finally uh Defender 2600 uh, said, you know, he had some early suggestions that I wasn't ready to do anything with the graphics yet. And then he said, you know, you're, you're, it's so cramped. And I thought, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. There's no way I'm going to be able to open this up. I'll have to reposition where Popeye walks, where Brutus walks. And it's just, it's going to be a lot. And sure enough, it worked out. So I'm thankful for that suggestion. And then Kevin Moss said, hey, you know, I really like the, the updates and everything, and good job. You know, your bucket's still a little wide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that bucket. Uh, maybe I better trim my bucket a little bit. So, <laughs> and uh, Atari Boy 2600 for the box art. Of course, Al at Atari for making everything possible. And thanks to my family, including the dog who missed out on a lot of walks. Oh, no. Because I was the donut, didn't want to go. I spent glued to the, P, uh, the PC. Uh, also to General Paul, Aaron, some of my old friends have just been encouraging along the way. So. Yeah. Well, that's great. And it, and it really shows that it's a community effort. And when they see something that they like, they want it to be better. So they people contribute to it and encourage you and really took it from like 
a demo that you're like, eh, it's just a demo. I don't want to, I can't do any more with it <laughs> to like yeah. w winning <laughs> an award right. for it for b best work in progress. That's, that's incredible. So, um, it's, it's just amazing what the community is capable of. And of course the incredible developers yeah. Yeah. that, that help out and all contribute to, to make it possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a village effort. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And, and, and thank you so much for making Popeye. It's such a fun game. Thanks. So much fun to play. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Really enjoy playing it. We look forward to playing it, it again yeah. and again on the show. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks Great. a lot. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Hooray. It's kind of working. And everybody said it, the sync was fine. So yeah. that's good. Um, so we will come back to Al. Sorry? Al. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back to Al later. Um, so the next category is Atari 2600 Best 4K and Under Homebrew Original. And I believe we added the 4K and Under in the second year because we wanted to show off the small games and what people could pack into a small amount of RAM. Yes. Because that's a whole thing. There's people that challenge themselves to compress the most fun you can in a game into, or, into the smallest amount and yeah. do something special with it or something unique or i'm always just amazed by what people fit into that small amount of uh oh my god a footprint you know yeah. yeah um so this is the uh atari 2600 best 4k and under homebrew original no. atari 2600 best completed 4k and under homebrew original Cannonhead Clash by Blue Swimmer, Code and Design. Vladimir Zuniga, Label, Manual, and Box Design. Crazy Tunes by Jeff Johnson. Dog on it by Andrew Polly, Game Programming and Graphics, Herbie Holler, Cartridge Label, Manual and Box Design, Charles Aikens Illustrations. Shadow Reflex by Master Control 90. Game by Blue Swimmer. Whale Dive by Martin Vilkins. Atari 2600, best completed um, under 4K homebrew. 4K and under. 4K and under. 4K I was, still how, how do I say that? 4K <laughs> and under. Uh, original. So in third place, we have a tie. Oh. Crazy Tunes by Jeff Johnson. And Shadow Reflex by Master Control 90. And in second place, we have Cannonhead Clash by Blue Swimmer. And drum roll. Um, the winner is Dog On It by Andrew Polly. Yay! And here we have Andrew. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you, thank you uh, very much. Um, it's, uh, this has been great. I, I guess before I want to talk about Dog On It, I just want to recognize everybody else. Uh, this was just great company to be in. I think every game you know, brought their own unique element. Um, I think this was MCP90's first game, which is awesome. I think so, yeah. And, uh, and you can't hate Flash. You know, when I look at that game, that is an instant head-to-head -head classic. I mean, oh. it's just instant. And uh, you know, 
a stat game and a 1K game. I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> that you can make a 1K game. And of course, Crazy Tunes with this, all this sound and music. And I think when I watched the stream on Whale Dive, they made that in the weekend, which you know kind of blows my mind. Just doggone it took about a year and a half. Um, I want to thank all the playtesters that helped me make Dog on It. Uh, that was the Thomas family, the Kerr family, Johnson family, and Lear family. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, the original version of Dog on It was a feasible game that, as the difficulty increased, it was a day of the week. So you started on Monday and ended on Friday. Um, Brandon Thomas, one of my uh, first playtesters, really wanted to be able to store power ups, so we kind of ditched them the day of the week and added the power pocket. And uh, Reed Kirk, another one of my playtesters, really wanted a game over screen. So I had to kind of revamp everything and fit it in, and that's kind of how we got the, you know, the game over screen, which I thought was a nice addition. Uh, I also want to thank my family for letting me work on this game. Um, it took a lot of time. Uh, my son helped me with the title screen song. I'm not musically inclined, but he is. And my daughter was my on-demand playtester. I just want to give a quick shout out to the 2600 High School Club for playing Dog on this year. Uh, thanks to Vichelli. And for Roger Poco, Jason Atari, and thank you, say Oyama family for breaking 50,000. Oh, Oyama family. <laughs> um, you know, if I had to sum up my first hunger experience as a book, it would be titled A Study in Ignorance. I really did not know what I was doing. Uh, with chapter one being screen rolls. Um, but you know, it was a lot of fun and I did want to keep the 4k and there was some struggles and I, I think I did what I would call poor man's code reduction. I'll never pretend to be able to get into, you know, in the mind of somebody like Thomas Yench, but I did what I could to make it fit. And, uh, just one, you know, I had a list of essentials I wanted in the game and one of them was, uh, to be able to pause between levels. And I was kind of a nod to my sister, Carrie, who, when we were growing up, we had an Atari and she was the Atari uh, uh, Pac-Man queen, and she was about to roll the score, and she had to use the bathroom. So she ate up as many pellets as she could, and had me go around and not eat any pellets until she got back. <laughs> That's why I added the pause. <laughs> uh, I just want to thank everybody at Atari Age for their feedback. It's been great, and just considered me worthy of this award. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. What what an accomplishment! Like if if anybody looks at uh, Dog on it. Hmm. And and realizes that all fit into 4K. There's it's amazing. <laughs> three distinct play screens. There's music. There's lots of dogs yeah. <laughs> in it, and there's cats and a van. And it's unbelievable what you've been able to pack into 4K. So congratulations again. Well deserved. Thank you. Thank so you. so uh, talk with you soon. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, definitely an amazing, amazing game. We had lots of fun playing that. Uh, and, oh, um, so much fun. It's definitely such a read, great game. read the story that's posted on Atari Age forums about the development and the background that led up to the game. Yes. It's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, following that is the Atari 2600 Best 4K and Under Homebrew Port. So these are ports of games that people have been able to pack into 4K and under, mm -hmm. whether they're arcade games or a port of some other uh, system, um, they've been able to make them into uh, a 4K and under game. Um, so let's uh, check out the nominees for best uh, 4K and under port. Atari 2600 best completed 4K and under homebrew port. Avalanche by John Champeau, Code and Design, Thomas Yench, Additional Coding and Optimizations, Nathan Strum, Graphics, and David Exton, Packaging, Illustration, and Design. B-Blocks by Jeff Haber and Jeremiah Knoll. Flappy Bird by Stephen Illingworth. Grunio Zertza 
by Simon Manson. Midspace by Chris Reed. Robot City by Thomas Yench, Game Design and Programming, and David Exton, Illustration and Manual Design. And the winners are, or the runner-ups, uh, for Atari 2600 Best Completed 4K and under Homebrew Port. Uh, in third place, B Blocks by Jeff Haber and Jeremiah Noel. In second place, Avalanche by John Champeau. And the winner is for Atari 2600 Best Completed 4K and under Homebrew Port, Robot City by Thomas Yench. And here he is, Thomas. Congratulations. Oh, in one second. There we go. Thomas, welcome and congratulations. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. So, the tension was not there. You, you made me that I won a few days ago so that I can prepare. <laughs> Maybe you should rethink this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that I finally won my own, own award and not only with cooperating with other people, which was always great, but this one is from me. <laughs> uh, That's right. And, and I take credits probably for the longest uh, making of the game. I look back uh, through some um, posts on Atari Agent. This one started at June 2002, uh, when, when the video game critic reviewed an Odyssey 2 prototype and I uh, posted, hey, this looks great, somebody should do a port for the Atari 2600. And uh, yeah, then I started doing it in August. Yeah, and then something not so, so nice happened with, with my Thrust game, which was not uh, sent out, even though people had paid for it. And that killed the project for quite some years. And then there was a mini game competition uh, where I did a 1K version of this game. And uh, you can see the kernel for this 1K version is still in there. So um, this was pretty nice, and yeah, again, real life came into place, and other projects like Boulder Dash, and that was uh, so it was on yeah on hold or in the background for ten years, twelve years, until you <laughs> came up with the, with the game. <laughs> I was digging through the archives and found show. it. Yeah, yeah, in, the, in your show, and you you showed it with, together with Erlen. And you both liked it, and I watched the show and thought, mm, maybe I should continue it with this game. So, yeah, I started continuing with it one year after your show, because I was busy with other stuff, <laughs> and I got it done, finally, after 18 years. Huh, not, too, not too long of a development time, not too big a deal. <laughs> no, no, somebody... I wonder if anybody will ever beat me here. <laughs> and uh, of, of course, I have to thank you and Erlen and the whole Zero Page Homebrew team, Tanya, Darcy, for, for, for promoting this thing and for making motivate homebrewers all the time. Um, Albert and the Atari Age community is always very, very nice and helpful and motivating. Um, then I have to thank David Exton for the great artwork you can see in, in, in my background. Mm -hmm. Ah, nice. Yes, that's, that's the artwork of the, of, the, of the box and the card. And last, not least, Stephen Anthony of Stella. Uh, and, and also Eckhart Stolberg of Z26, because that was the emulator back then when I started. But now it is Stella, which is the best emulator. And Stephen had... had has invested so much time and he was doing this all the time for more than 10 years on its own so thank you yeah yeah it, it takes a community it, like everybody puts in a little piece to make these games happen it it's not like like you said you did develop it all on your own but not 
not really. Like, there's such contributions, but congratulations. It's a wonderful game, it's, and it's so much fun to play, too. It's so um, simple, but yet strategic. It's, yeah. it's one of those games that easy to pick up, but hard to master, especially on the hard level. Oh, my God. Yeah. When they rescue each no, other. All my, games, <laughs> all my games are hard to master. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So congratulations, Thomas. Excellent. Excellent job. Thanks a lot. Congrats again. So we'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. So uh, I want to pause now and give thanks to um, the nomination committees mm. um, who helped narrow down all these tons and tons of games into the six that you eventually voted on. Um, so for the 2600 nomination committee, um, the people on it that uh, helped play all these games were Brian Mathern, Chris Walton, myself, John Champo, Stephen Ramirez, Thomas Yench, Nathan Strum, Filippo Santello, Santeloco? Hmm. Carl Garrison, and Lewis Hill. Um, and on 7800 nomination committee, uh, myself, uh, Filippo Santeloco, oh boy, sorry, <laughs> Santeloco, Santeloco, one of those, pick which one's right, uh, Daryl Genther, uh, Lewis Hill, Matt Smith, Steve Fulton, Smitty B, Mike Sarna, Steve Ramirez, Brian Mather, and on the 8-bit 5200 nomination committee, Adam, Kaz, Filippo, Martin Simek, Smekek, Konstantinos Giamalidis, <laughs> oh boy, so sorry, and Brian Mather. So all those people uh, did a ton of work to play all these games and vote on them for all the various categories. And then we took the top most voted games, top mm -hmm. six in each of those categories, and then put them online in the Atari Age forums for you guys to vote on. And then these are the results of it of uh, you guys voting on those top six. That's how the process works, if you ever wanted to know behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, so the next category is Atari 2600 Best Graphics Original. And uh, this is the visuals that are on the, in the games. This is everything you see. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> By best cinematography yeah. for, for a movie, yes. right? Um, so let's take a look at the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Graphics Original. Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Original Graphics. One versus One Baseball by Edward Smith. Cannonhead Clash by Blue Swimmer, Code and Design. Vladimir Zuniga, Label, Manual, and Box Design. Doggone It by Andrew Polly, Game Programming and Graphics. Herbie Holler, Cartridge Label, Manual, and Box Design. And Charles Aikens, Illustrations. I Ran by Vladimir Zuniga. Ninja Sky in Low Res World by Vladimir Zuniga. Unholy by Leonardo Santiago and Vladimir Zuniga Packaging Art. All right, so for Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Original Graphics. Coming in third, Doggone It by Andrew Polly. And in second place, Ninja Sky in Low Res World by Vladimir Zuniga. And winner, Unholy 
by Leonardo Santiago. And Leonardo has sent in a written acceptance uh, speech. Um, he says, I feel incredibly happy to receive this award, mainly because I spent a lot of time dedicating, uh, deciding on every little visual detail that made the game become what it is. The idea while the developing Unholy was to create a game with a gloomy atmosphere, with the game Halloween as visual references. The rooms that are a part of, a, of the mansion are inspired by this game, but many ideas came up during the development, adding more details and enriching the game's graphics. I tried to do something that pleases me, and by doing it in that way, I ended up pleasing others too. I would like to thank the Atari Age community, James O'Brien, the Zero Page Homebrew Channel, and everyone who voted for Unholy. Nowadays, I'm working on two new games. One of them is done, and one of them will be presented soon. I hope my new concepts can please everyone too. Thanks for this opportunity, Leonardo Santiago. And uh, when we played Unholy, mm. uh, the, the visuals did blow us away as well. It, it, the, the lightning that was flashing in through the windows. I feel like it's the little details yeah. in the graphics that, that give the game a feel, and everything from the lightning to the floor, to designs, the, the floor designs, and the like, lava coming up slowly, yeah, um, the enemies, the graphics. Blood like dripping from the ceiling, like all of that was just amazing. Yeah. And even even um, your foes in, in that game too, all the, all the creative. skulls the and the ghosts. And, and yeah, so yeah. yeah, we were blown away as well. So yeah. congratulations, yeah. Leonardo. That was yeah. a wonderful game. Detroit really says great, great atmosphere. Yeah. yeah, and those visuals really helped that atmosphere. Like, yes. It, it's, it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, so now we're going to move on to Atari 2600 Best Graphics uh, for Port. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is taking graphics from another game and adapting them for the 2600, which is not uh, sometimes an easy task because they have very, very different ways of drawing graphics mm -hmm. on the 2600 than any other system. So here are the nominees. Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Port Graphics. Avalanche by John Champeau, Code and Design, Thomas Yench, Additional Coding and Optimizations, Nathan Strum, Graphics, and David Exton, Packaging, Illustration, and Design. Blip Skip Ball by Brooke Anderson. Cat by Marco Johannes, Programming, Dyfid Hitchings, Produced, Charmheel Desir, Drawn Artwork. Robot City by Thomas Yench, Game Design and Programming, and David Exton, Illustration and Manual Design. Tower of Rubble by Dion Olsthorn, Programming and Manual, and David Drives, Label and Box Artwork. Zookeeper by John Champeau, Code and Design, Nathan Strum, Graphics, Robert Vieira, Music and Sound Effects, Thomas Yench, Music and Sound Effects Code, Lee Kebler, Additional Music and Testing, and Nathan Strum, Packaging, Illustration, and Design. People in the chat are criticizing my pronunciation. I, I just can't. I can't do it. Your pronunciation. <laughs> I try. <laughs> my bad pronunciation. My, my pronunciation. Oh, yours. Yeah. Well, I told you to say it that way. That's uh, the, 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 uh In third place is... Pit Cat by Marco Johannes and David Hitchings. I got it right that time. Never again, probably. In second place, Tower of Rubble by Dion Osthorn. And the winner for Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Port Graphics is Zookeeper by Nathan Strum. Yay! Congratulations, Nathan. Welcome. Thank you, James. Uh, Thanks, uh, you know, to everybody who voted, and uh, I want to 
to thank especially John for including me um, in yet another one of his amazing projects. Uh, you know, it's he provides the palette and the framework that I get to work with that makes it possible for all those sprites to be pushed around the screen in just an insane amount. And uh, he also came up with the method for drawing the bricks when we were developing Mappy. He was working with Thomas Yench on the title screen, and there were these vertical line artifacts that appeared, and John just thought, oh, hey, those make pretty cool bricks, and that's kind of what the, the genesis of the idea for Zookeeper was, and once he got that working, then he asked me to start putting the rest of the graphics together. And, um, you know, it, it, he gave me a lot of freedom with how to develop stuff, and he also gave me some amazing... Um, tools to work with in terms of like multicolored sprites on the bonus stages which made you know doing the Zelda Zelda and the monkey sprites look so nice you know it's it's a luxury I don't get very often with 2600 games because most of the time they have to be monochromatic or have other limitations um, and then um, the other kind of interesting side note to the graphics on the game is we were putting the title screen together for this one and I was trying to figure out how to do the static that shows up in the middle of the um, letters. And I suggested to him, hey, could you do the Yars Revenge thing where it just reads the code and generates static from that? And he said, yeah, I think I can do that. And so he put that in there and uh, saved me from having to figure out how to animate static by hand. So um, it was a really fun project to work on, and I'm glad people are enjoying it. I know Albert is working really hard to get the physical copies out into people's hands. Um, so I just want to, again, thank everybody who voted for the game and is enjoying it. And um, thanks again to Sir H. Homebrew for all that you guys do and for the award show. And uh, this is a really great way to bring the community together and recognize the people who put the work into these games. Well, thank you, Nathan. Um, it's amazing uh, what, what things can come from some almost an accident, like those the bricks. Yeah, and it, it plays so well that game, but it, it looks beautiful too. All the um, animal icons and um, uh, the the levels, and especially the um, the platform jumping levels too. It's it's such a beautiful game. Thank you so much. Oh, it was my pleasure to work on it. It's it's fun to see people's responses to it. It's, it's great to read them in the forums, but it's another thing to watch you guys play it on the stream and then see people responding to it in real time. And I know that the programmers really appreciate that too. Well, I'm glad to hear that. We enjoy playing them. So <laughs> uh, it's wonderful to get the opportunity to play all these, these amazing games that people develop. And Zookeeper is definitely high up on that list of, of um, favorite games this year. So um, congratulations. Well, thank you again, and thanks again for all the work that you're putting into this show. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, we will talk to you uh, soon, Nathan. Thank you for right. coming on. All right, thank you. Just getting set up uh, for our next talk, which actually is a sponsor of the show. And uh, so if you just hang with me for one second. There we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Trying to get that set up. We may do another award before that. If it takes a bit of time. If it takes a bit of time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it might not. We might be okay. One second. There we go. So this might work. We're going to try for the... Uh, for the conference uh, with the people from uh, Argon, made by Markspace Inc. Uh, this is going to be Andrew, the creative director of Project Argon, and uh, he'll be joining me with possibly some other people. Awesome. And uh, this is uh, an emulator that you can play homebrew games on mm -hmm. or other classic games as well uh, by loading them on. But there's already a number of homebrew games uh, loaded onto Argon and you can play it on your phone, on your tablet, 
and another uh, amongst many other um, devices as well. That's very cool. So we're just waiting for them to connect right now. I just sent them the link to join. Oh, it says I have another meeting in progress. Oh no. You have two running at once? This should be the meeting. <laughs> that they should join. Huh. Participants. Maybe I can invite from here. I'm trying it on Zoom here. Probably watching as well. <laughs> Try this link. I think that's the same link. Let's see. Is it the same link? It is the no, it's a different link. Okay, good. Hopefully it'll show them coming in. Um, and uh, so Argon uh, supplied the Awards, actually, the physical awards this year. Mm -hmm. And here they are. Beautiful. A Beautiful awards. Well, and these will be sent out. <laughs> sent out. Oh, here we go. These will be sent out to the uh, winners. Yes. Of... Here we go. Admit. And I think this might be working. We'll see if we can go full screen. Right. Andrew. We may not be able to hear you yet, but I will fix that. We make you full screen. How do we do that? I don't know if you can. Pin, right? Oh yes. One step <laughs> closer. Now we just need audio from you coming out. The right speakers. The right speakers. Hmm. That's muting my audio. There's settings. There yeah, where be. are they? Settings, settings, no. Maybe it's in the program itself. If you can hold for one second, Andrew. Joys of live shows. Yes. <laughs> it makes it interesting and also annoying for the hosts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, found the settings for audio. And we want the speakers to be the actual speakers. And we should be able to, I can hear non-noises now. There we go. Andrew. Hi there. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. And also, of well, course, thank you for sponsoring this year's awards, as you did last year as well. <laughs> yeah, well, we've, uh, you know, uh, Argon started out with uh, Atari emulation, um, especially links related stuff. Um, this year, uh, we've grown pretty quick. Um, we've added, um, we've added 2600 to 7800. And of course, you know, we have plans to add 8 bit, um, a variety of 8 bit, including computers eventually going forward. Yeah. So we're really excited, and you know, I mean, from you know, for my part, I'm just blown away by the amazing stuff that's being produced for the platform. Oh, and yeah. um, you know, Argon isn't just an emulator. We we you know, it's it's one of the few that you can get where once you install it, you immediately have content available to play. And we've really been enjoying you know sharing the uh, what, I, what I'm what I'm calling the indie retro content <laughs> with uh, with you know all the people who are playing Argon. And we've just passed. A thousand installs, and I think we're going to be growing pretty wow. quickly uh, moving forward. So, you know, uh, for us, you know, the stuff that you're talking about here, the people that you're working with here, we're excited to make that part of a plat of the platform and have that content available uh, for developers who want that to be on the platform. That's that's awesome, and and I've I've played it on my phone and on my tablet, and it just it works really really good. And uh, the emulation is, is incredible. And I don't know if you uh, heard at the top of the show, we announced that we're going to be adding a Lynx, Atari Lynx category to next year's awards, which you do have on, uh, on, on, on Argon as well. Yeah, Lynx was either one of the first or the first that, uh, um, of, the, uh, of the platforms that we emulated. And yeah, and we've really, um, you know, we're not just, you know, we're trying to, oh, Andy's showed up, and I'm sure he can talk to this as well. Um, Andy's our, our lead engineer on the project. Um, but, you know, we've really done our best to, you know, what I'm calling, you know, because I'm on the uh, creative director marketing side, what I'm calling our better than ever features, you know, really trying to make sure stuff like, uh, hi, Andy. <laughs> can, can we hear you? Are you there? Um, 
make sure um, mm-hmm. that we're doing a bunch of what I'm calling better than ever features, which are really about, um, you know, like we're adding stereo to platforms. Um, you know, with Vectrex, obviously, because it was black and white, we're adding dynamic color. Nice. Um, you know, and Andy's really been working hard to make sure that, um, you know, the emulation is really top tier and, uh, and that we're um, able to emulate a variety of platforms. Andy, can you, uh, can you hear us? He's not there. Oh, but we can't hear him. Okay. Um, all right. Nope, no sound from you, I'm oh, afraid. He's unmuted now. Okay, he okay. should get oh, yeah. Thank there you. we go. So I, I, was, I was hoping if we could let Andy talk for a minute since he did the hard work of coding up this stuff and talk to some of the advanced features. And, you know, Andy, I, I don't know if you want to talk to the way we're implementing the pokey chips and, and some of the audio stuff that's, that's I think, unique to Argon. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, one of the nice things about running in an emulated environment is you've got the constraints that are there, but then you can kind of play with them a little bit. So when you've got, like, for example, the sound chips, you've got, you know, the, the, the hardware has distinct channels, and you can then do things um, that, in the, the original stuff, it, it's just mixed and mono and sent to your, to your TV. Um, but with a, with an emulated environment, we can do some things where we'd like to do things like send it to different channels, left and right, and so forth. And one of the things we'd like to be able to do is to kind of do that intelligent in the future. But for people who are writing games, we'd also like to be able to just add a little bit of sort of spice to the to the uh, to the system where you can, when you are when you're writing some code, you can say, "I'd like this a little bit left. I'd like this a little bit right for particular sounds," and just kind of create a much more rich environment, one that doesn't conflict with the constraints of running on real hardware, um, but can create something that is um, more um, immersive and more, I don't know, it's more fun. We've been doing some stuff with, with uh, like dual pokey chips, for example, in the last in the last few weeks, where you've got, we, it's been possible to have multiple pokey chips on a, on a, on a 7800 for, for, for some time with, with, you know, with the hardware expansion and so forth. But um, in software, we can do things, it's so much easier to do things like just say, I'm one chip at this address, and providing everybody agrees, everything works. So we're hoping to be able to kind of formalize that process a little bit in order to create richer experiences and so, you know, one thing I'll say, um, you know, if there's people out there who want to get in touch with us, you can reach out um, and, you know, talk about, you know, we have a very robust free tier. Um, right now we're in beta, so everything is available um, to the users. Um, but, you know, we are going to be, I mean, I will, I want to let everybody know that we're ultimately going to be a subscription service. So things that are on the free tier now will stay free, especially stuff like demos and a bunch of other things. We plan to keep that tier very robust. But also, we'll be having a paid tier and, and looking for top quality games to put in there. So you know, and, and we are absolutely looking for these kind of um, these kind of indie retro, you know, new retro games, or you know, even titles that have been made over the last you know, 15, 20 years, um, you know, that, that people haven't seen before, that aren't the typical you know package of Atari games that shows up on every platform. And we really, we really want to. Um, you know, use this as an opportunity. And also, you know, we're hoping that in the future for contests like this, we can have, um, you know, the games available to play, you know, before they come out. The one thing I will say with, you know, for us is, um, while it's really exciting to see people making amazing new versions of, of games that have already existed, we're not going to be able to put those games up. But, um, you know, I want to put out the call, you know, it, there, there's no issue with us changing, you know, you change the title, you change the graphics, and, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're Argon ready. So it may not be, you know, exactly the same as the original, but we're happy to uh, talk to you about that as well. So, And, and you guys are um, in the Atari Age forums as well for the developers to reach out to you. I think it's B. Hall? Uh, yeah, something? Brian is our CEO, and he's, he's all over there. He's always in there. If you catch Brian, you know, feel free to connect with him. Um, you know, Mark Space is a, is a, is a technical company at the, at the base. Um, I probably, you know, I, I code as well, but not for the our, you know not for projects at, on Argon, but you know everybody's technically versed up to Andy, who's you know he's, he's up in, in up to his eyeballs in this stuff and, and has been doing an amazing job of getting new platforms um, available. Um, you know, including we've got we've got NES coming up and a bunch of new platforms. I mean, our goal is, and Andy, you're welcome to talk to this. He said was to have the, you know as much of the eight bit catalog um, available as many of the eight bit machines available within the next couple of years. Yeah. So you, you you guys are pretty much making uh, homebrew available for on the go so that people can play it on their phones. And while they're not at their computers, a very easy way to emulate these games. 
Yeah, and and we're doing lean back, so you know, um, so we're on a bunch of different um, TV compatible platforms as well. Um, Andy, you know, um, Shield is the main one for us, but a bunch of other ones. And and Andy's done a great job of making sure that um, that it's working fantastically on those platforms. I mean, it's a little. We're still working on some UI stuff, but it all works. It's all in there, you know. And we and we're very responsive to people asking us for 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 stuff, both both our users and the developers. Well, I want to thank you guys and your company for uh, sponsoring the the third annual Atari Homebrew Awards. And where can they find Argon? Uh, on so, the web and on, you know, on these platforms as well, and like on Android and iPhone. So we're in the Play Store. Um, we're in beta now, so you have to jump through with some some small hoops. But if you look up Argon, you can find us in the Play Store. And if I get any of this wrong, jump in and let me know. Um, and and uh, and then PlayArgon.com is will take you to the main page where you can uh, get all the links you need to install it. We're also on. We're also doing work on Raspberry Pi. Um, as well, so um, and Android, uh, not, not, not Android, um, Amazon as well, Amazon devices as well. So um, you know, Raspberry Pi is a little bit more experimental right now, but it works. That's um, awesome. So and works, you know, we'll be expanding onto those systems as well. That's great. Well, it was great having you guys on the show this year. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for having us, and, and we really love what you guys are doing. And you know, we look, we really enjoyed sponsoring it and seeing all these amazing games. So yeah. And we're looking forward to adding in links next year and we can, you know, expand out and support more of the platform you have in Argon. Great. Thank you so much. So thanks for coming on and we'll talk with you soon. Okay. Thanks, Andrew and Andy. Excellent. Well, that actually worked. It's great. Yes. <laughs> We've got it working. It's like, whew, every time some, something connects and <laughs> you can hear and you can see it, it's like a, whew, it's a, a huge relief. <laughs> yep. So we're going to move on to the next category, which is Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Original. Now, this is everything that you hear. Mm -hmm. So this is both the music in the game and all the sound effects. So anything that's audible, like we've got the graphics category for mm -hmm. visuals and we've got the audio category for the music and the sound. So this is Atari, this is the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Original. Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Original, Music and Sound. Asteroids Attack by Ricardo Pin. Cannon Head Clash by Blue Swimmer, Code and Design. Vladimir Zuniga, Label, Manual, and Box Design. Crazy Tunes by Jeff Johnson. Doggone It by Andrew Polly, Game Programming and Graphics, Herbie Holler, Cartridge Label, Manual and Box Design, and Charles Aikens Illustrations. Ninja Sky in Low Res World by Vladimir Zuniga. Unholy by Leonardo Santiago and Vladimir Zuniga Packaging Art. All right, so for Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Original Music and Sound. In third place, we have Crazy Tunes by Jeff Johnson. And in second place, Asteroids Attack by Ricardo Pym. And the winner 
Unholy by Leonardo Santiago. And we have a written acceptance speech from Leonardo Santiago for Best Music and Sound Original 2600. It is a great honor for me to receive this award. I can hardly believe that Unholy won in Best Music and Sound category, especially because I'm not a musician and because of the other existing nominees. At the beginning, Unholy would not have background music that would follow the character during his trajectory. This concept showed up during the development, and I believe that by using Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata at a subtle volume, it gave the game a gloomy atmosphere it needed. Thank you very much for the award. I would like to thank all of the Atari Age community, James O'Brien and Zero Page Homebrew Channel, and everyone who voted for Unholy. Thanks a lot, Leonardo Santiago. And um, like I said before, the, even just the lightning, the sound of the lightning yeah. in the game really added to it in this slow sonata playing in the background yeah yeah it's really really good yeah i i think it all it all it, it's a game that has a really wonderful atmosphere and feel and it's 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 the visuals and it's the music and it's the sound and everything kind of builds together which is yeah. is is great and a well-deserved award for leonardo mm -hmm. uh so we're going to move on to the same category except for ports uh this is uh atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Port, and here are the nominees. Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Port, Music and Sound. Blip Skip Ball by Brooke Anderson. Mid Space by Chris Reed. Kit Cat by Marco Johannes, programming, Dyfid Hitchings, produced, Charm Heel Desir, drawn artwork. Robot City by Thomas Jensch, Game Design and Programming, and David Exton, Illustration and Manual Design. Tower of Rubble by Dion Olsthorn, Programming and Manual, and David Drives, Label and Box Artwork. Zookeeper by John Champeau, Code and Design, Nathan Strum, Graphics, Robert Vieira, Music and Sound Effects, Thomas Jensch, Music and Sound Effects Code, Lee Kebler, Additional Music and Testing, and Nathan Strum, Packaging, Illustration and Design. And... The winners are, or the winner, and the runners-up are, in third place, Pit Cat by Marco Johannes, and uh-oh, here comes the name again. Daffid. Daffid Hitchings. <laughs> in second place, Tower of Rubble by Dion, Dion Olsthorn. And the winner is, for Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Port Music and Sound, Zookeeper by Lee Kebler. Additional music and testing. And there's some other people as well who had contributed to the sound. Robert Vieira, music and sound effects. Thomas Yench, music and sound effects code. But we have Lee on the line here, and hopefully we have audio. But we're not yes, sure. Yes, I think you might. We Yay! have audio! Excellent. <laughs> Welcome, it was Lee. Browser. It was a browser. Okay. Oh, fiddly stuff. Not, not just me. Well, it's not just me having <laughs> audio issues. It does affect other people. <laughs> so, welcome and congratulations. It Thanks. Is, this is exciting. Yeah, it's quite the sound in Zookeeper it, because of the original uh, arcade game has really crazy wang twangy sound. Oh, so it was so weird. And honestly, I, it's crazy that this even worked out because I, I started working with John um, just as kind of testing, doing the QA. I, I 
it was a game that I grew up playing with an arcade. I, I know the game really well, um, and it's not it's not a game that a lot of people know super well. No. So I said, you know, I know this game fairly well. Why don't you, you let me, you know, play test it? And then we started talking, and he found out like that I had a background in music and music production. He's like, do you want to tackle this? And I said, sure. How hard could it be? <laughs> And then I learned how hard it actually is, but it was a blast. Um, and we had a really unique way of doing this, uh, some of the music, especially things like uh, the Lions theme. Um, I basically programmed it in, in a, a chiptune tracker uh, for, for like chiptune music production called mm-hmm. TIA Tracker. And then we built the... Um, we built the bin files off of it, or the uh, the uh, assembly files off of it, and went back and we're like, okay, so what did this write? Okay, cool, we're gonna take this code and <laughs> shove it into the game, because I don't know how to write assembly, so I found basically an engine that would write it for me, and I was like, I think this is what you need. Send it over to John, and he was just like, yep, yeah, that works, drops it in, boom, we got music. Um, so it was daunting at first, uh, but it ended up really quite, uh, almost, I don't wanna say easy, but it became, a nice workflow for creating complex music uh, for the 2600. Um, so it was fun. It was really limiting on trying because you don't have all the notes. Yeah. And so you're kind of like, well, it, this note's kind of close to this note. Let's let let's go back and forth. And, and in fact, I think James, you were on some of those votes of yeah. of okay, we've got a couple of themes <laughs> that sound close enough. Which one do people it's like? It's like number six is good, but four is okay and yeah it was very interesting yeah. it was it was an interesting uh method and and everybody who worked on the game um was just so stinking ca- talented so i was i was really honored and and surprised when when you guys contacted me he's like hey we want you to, you to come on and, and accept this so this is really an exception for an acceptance for like everybody who put months and time and headaches and <laughs> most of COVID into <laughs> yeah. trying to get this done. Yeah, yeah. John Champeau's games are usually quite a collaborative effort. There's a lot of people that come together because they're such, they're really big games. And, and yeah. they're very complex games. And he he's not, you know, he's not an expert at graphics. He's not an expert at sound. So he brings other people in and everybody contributes together. And it's quite something to watch and and I'm sure be a part of as well. It was it was really incredible, and I will tell you my appreciation as someone who really finds sound design important. Um, it was so nice that John um, has such a strong focus on the audio side of games because it's often overlooked. I feel like in a lot of Atari homebrews, and he he was not about to flinch on releasing this game until the sound was perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's, he- what, that's what makes a champ game, in my opinion, is like he doesn't move on the game unless it's perfect and just nails every champ game that he releases yeah he, he makes it look easy but uh because he cranks them out but but he he hones it he makes sure it's it's as close to the arcade or it's close to people's expectations uh as possible or at yeah. least it's the most fun it can be as possible because sometimes he doesn't do exactly what the arcade does but uh, yeah yeah, it actually sometimes makes it better. It takes things that oh, yeah. doesn't work in the arcade and it's like, yeah, that kind of sucked. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, Im- and improves it and, and even goes above and beyond and puts like two players on the screen when there was only ever one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and Zookeeper is, to me, one of the most impressive video games I've seen Champ Games put out. And Champ Games put out some ma- they, they put out amazing video games. Yeah. Um, I think maybe Gorf is going to be better. It's a big game. It's multi, multi, multi screens. Yeah. Gorf is big. Yeah. yeah. I think I think Gorf might be like, and I and, and he asked if I would work on the the music on that and the sound on that too. So I'm, that's something nice. I'm getting started on. Nice. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to that one. But man, I was so thrilled to see Zookeeper <laughs> come out. Uh, yeah. it, it, art box game <laughs> everything. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. S- something you can hold in your hand physically and say, "I did this." Right. <laughs> this yeah <laughs> well congratulations lee well deserved it's you. excellent you. sound and music it's got it retained all that that what i describe as twanginess from the original arcade uh game yeah yeah it's, it's very bouncy yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so thank you very much and congratulations bye-bye bye excellent so what do we have up next 
It is best packaging. So this is anything that is physical because uh, not every game makes it to be a physical game. Some stay in the realm of ROMs, the binaries, um, but, so, but some of them, uh, the uh, developer options to make it in onto a cart or take it even further, cart and manual, or take it even further and do a cart, a manual, and a box. And what we did is we made um, a category for best packaging, and this is anything that's physical, the cartridge artwork, um, sometimes people do colored cartridges, um, see-through cartridges, transparent ones. Mm -hmm. I love the variety of, of ingenuity that go into packaging. And then there's also feelies or things that go in besides those basic three things into the box. There's additional pamphlets. Sometimes there's toys that they put in. So it's, it's really fun to see what they come up with for these games. Um, so here are the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Packaging. Atari 2600 Best Packaging Daredevil by Lewis Hill Graphics Code and Design Atari Boy 2600 Packaging Illustration and Design Doggone It by Andrew Polly. Game Programming and Graphics, Herbie Holler, Cartridge Label Manual and Box Design, and Charles Aiken's Illustrations. Ninja Sky in Low Res World by Vladimir Zuniga. Robot City by Thomas Jentsch, Game Design and Programming, and David Exton, Illustration and Manual Design. Tower of Rubble by Dion Olsthorn, Programming and Manual, and David Drives, Label and Box Artwork. Zookeeper by John Champeau, Code and Design, Nathan Strum, Graphics, Robert Vieira, Music and Sound Effects, Thomas Jentsch, Music and Sound Effects Code, Lee Kebler, Additional Music and Testing, and Nathan Strum, Packaging, Illustration and Design. And for Atari 2600 Best Packaging in third place, Robot City by David Exton, Illustration and Manual Design. In second place, Zookeeper by Nathan Strum, Packaging, Illustration and Design. And in first place for 2600 Best Packaging, Dog On It by Herbie Haller, Cartridge Label, Manual and Box Design, and Charles Aikens, Illustrations. And to uh, accept their award is Andrew Polly, the developer of Dog On It. Welcome back! Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I tried to get her beyond, but he, he declined. So <laughs> you um, can't get everyone. I will accept this on his and Charles's behalf. Um, as I was wrapping up programming and I started thinking about packaging, I, I had already in mind what I wanted it to kind of look like. Um, as far as the main label, and one of my favorite games as a kid, for his gameplay, but also for his label, was Jungle Hunt. I really liked Jungle Hunt. So, you know, when I decided to, to do this, I said, there's no way I could do this. So I had to find somebody I could trust and put up with me. <laughs> so Herbie is my wife's cousin and a graphic designer, so he was it. Uh, he's a super nice guy. He's level-headed, which came in hand. So I had most of the text already in my mind for the manual. And uh, I just sent Herbie a bare bones outline of what I wanted the manual to look like. I sent him a picture of the Jungle Hunt label, and he just took off with it. Um, he sought out Charles and the illustrator, and 
as I say, the rest is after just a few revisions, <laughs> history. Um, a lot of people I want to thank on this one. Um, you know, all the other nominees, I mean, they were just works of art. And I really liked how it was a lot of diverse types of um, boxes and, and art. Um, you know, my hat's off to David Eston. That was just amazing. Oh, yeah. Um, but I want to thank Nathan Strum for his full review of Dog on It. Uh, which actually became an extra insert in the box. Um, I had never communicated with Nathan before, and I just asked him out of the blue, and he didn't hesitate. And if people don't know it, behind all of that wit and you know, he has and talent, he's a nice guy. <laughs> um, I want to thank you, James and Tanya, uh, as well as Roger Blair, for you. providing your review that went on the back of the box. You know, I thought about summarizing thought about it myself, which... Uh, you guys did it so much better than I could have ever done, so thank you. Uh, and uh, the exception notepad was kind of a last-minute idea, uh, which was another extra item in the box. So I kind of sketched that up, sent to Herbie, and he almost had that done immediately. Uh, I want to give a, another thank you to Atari H user BF Stats, who he voluntarily reached out to me and offered me the inserts that hold the cartridge. I had considered making these myself, like with an X-Acto knife, and I'm really glad I didn't. <laughs> um, that was without saying that I need to thank Al Russo for making the cartridges. Uh, developing a game wouldn't feel complete until you can actually hold that molded plastic shell in your hand, yep. insert it into your Atari, and see your creation on the TV. It, that, that's the defining moment right there. Um, as far as the actual packaging, the packaging that the game shipped in, and I guess James, I do have to ask you, did you actually get your game? Not yet. No. Did I? Did I get it? Is it one of the packages that oh, we haven't no, opened I, I, yet? I, I think there's so. There's a stack of packages I haven't opened yet. I okay. well, On the show. So yes, we might I have think, it. I think I do yeah. have it now. Yeah. So did I Did it. I win the award for longest uh, time to get it? Or <laughs> did the Brazilian take well, longer the, still? There's one in Brazil that I think is held up in customs. But uh, mm. you gave it your best shot, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what I tried to do with that was just make it a little bit personal by including everybody's uh, Atari Age avatar on the shipping label mm. and including the personal yeah. note inside. And, okay. You know, for those that received a copy of the game, I just hope it's that when it arrived, it put a smile yeah. on your face. And that, that's what I was going for. Um, I just want to reemphasize, I share this award with Herbie and Charles. I consider myself the idea man, and they were the blood, sweat, and tears. So to be recognized with all the other nominees was praise enough, but to win this one is an incredible honor. So thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. The, the the extras in from what I've seen of the pictures, they're they're really fun. Mm -hmm. They're really great. The delivery notice and everything. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Talk with you soon. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> bye bye, Andrew. Uh so the next uh category is Atari seventy eight hundred. Mm -hmm. Best homebrew. So, uh, here are the nominees for Atari 7800 Best Homebrew. Atari 7800 Best Completed Homebrew. Danger Zone by Lewis Hill. Dragon's Cash by Todd Fermansky, Code and Design, Benedict Sheffer, Label and Manual Cover Art, Manual Layout. Go Sub by Chris Reed. Millie and Molly by Matt Smith, Code, Mike Sarna, Code, Bobby Clark, Music, Pac Man Collection 40th Anniversary Edition by Bob DiCrescenzo, Code, and Perry Fuente, Sound. Plink by B.H.B. Smith.
All right, so for Atari 7800, best completed homebrew, we have in third place Dragon's Cash by Todd Fermansky. And in second place, Millie and Molly by Matt Smith. And the winner, drum roll, is Pac-Man Collection 40th Anniversary Edition by Bob DeCrescenzo. And I believe we have a recorded video from him. We do, a pre-recorded video. Yes. Here it is. Hi, guys. Um, I just want to... From the bottom of my heart, tell me thank you. Um, I really didn't think I was going to win this year with all the excellent homers that are out there. Um, I, I am more than honored. Um, I really appreciate the love you guys have shown me. You're, you're all awesome. Like I tell you all the time, you really are. Um, this is uh, wonderful. Um, I, I can't. Um, just, I, I appreciate all of you and I thank you so much. Um, I just, I'm glad that you guys like the stuff that I create for the love of it. Um, because my hobby becomes everybody's hobby um, on Atari age because we're just that close knit of a group. Um, I also want to thank, thank, uh, thank, thank Perry Fuente um, for the excellent Yamaha sounds that he did. Um, and I also want to thank Dintar816 for showing me that you can really get very close to arcade sounds with the Tia if you do it frame by frame. Um, so, and I also want to thank Defender2600. Um, you pushed me to do things with graphics that I didn't think I could do um, or that I, I rest on you know, not pushing a little bit further to try to get better colors out of things. And of course, Trevor, again, you guys are, you guys are awesome. And if I forgot anybody, I'm very sorry. Um, it's not because, you know, I'm not appreciative. Um, so again, thank you. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that um, pretty close to Galaxian, <laughs> getting done. And then I probably will get back to uh, Adventure 3. See how many games they can get done this year. Um, thanks, guys, and take care. And we're back. We had a, a camera malfunction. <laughs> well, well, I don't know if you saw me looking off with a, a panic in my eyes, um, but we fixed it. It's all good. Erin's Aaron, yeah. fixed it, which uh, which is good. So we've got our close-up camera back. Yes. Or do we? And yeah, we do. Awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah. So congrats, Bob. Congrats, Bob. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great. Uh, yeah. His games are like in that Pac-Man game. There's like ten Pac-Man. I don't games know, but there are a lot. There are there's a lot. so many variations, yeah. and the, the sound is just impeccable. Yeah. So if you love Pac-Man, that's a that's a go game. to Bob. Yeah, that's <laughs> a game to, to get. Yeah. He's, yeah. I think he's pretty much almost covered every Pac-Man game now. Mm -hmm. Because uh, he's got uh, like baby Pac-Man, I think Super Pac-Man, and yeah, this Pac-Man Pac collection. And, yes. Oh my goodness. Excellent. So many. Yes. Um, so that was uh, seven thousand eight hundred uh, best homebrew, yes. and uh, and there's a lot of new homebrews on the horizon for seven thousand eight hundred. Just go to the forums. It is out of control. In mm -hmm. fact, people are and they're really really well made. Um, so the next category is Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Homebrew. Um, and we've combined the 5200 and the 8-Bit because, like I said at the top of the show, there are just two 5200 games um, made last year. So can't really make a category with two, <laughs> two things. So we combine them because they are programmed relatively similar because 5200 shares the same code, uh, type of code and chips. Um, but there's slight variations, I believe, in the joystick uh, handling. The way it handles the joystick because the 5200 has analog joysticks. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, here are the nominees for Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Homebrew. Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Completed Homebrew. Biscuits in Hell by Paul Lay 
Daryl Genther, Jaden Houghtons. Disco Pop by Christian Kruger. Dizzy, the Ultimate Cartoon Adventure by Frantisek Hura and Christian Kruger. Last Squadron by Janusz Habowski and Michał Szpilowski. Raymaze 2000 by Nelson Ramirez, Paul Fisher, Vince Cool, Bobby Clark, and Jason Kendall. Runner Bear by Paul Lay, Daryl Genther, and Rob Schlort. And the results of the voting are. <laughs> oh no, a better way to say it. Because um, you don't just say the winner. In third place, Dizzy, The Ultimate Cartoon Adventure by Frantisek Haura, 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 Christian Kruger, and second place, Disco Pop by Christian Kruger. And the winner is Last Squadron by Janusz Habowski and Michał Szpilowski. And they have sent in not only the pronunciations of their names, <laughs> but a written acceptance speech from Yanush. Uh, thank you to everyone who liked the game and voted for it. It motivates me to keep working on better and better games. I hope that this year I'll also have some time to show off my new production. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. there, there are some really amazing, amazing games, games there, in the 8-bit yeah. category, and it was really fun playing. Yes. Through them. Oh, yeah. Um, on the show, because uh, we don't normally play too many 8-bit no, games. No, and, and they're all new games, I mean, for the most part for me, so it's it's kind of fun to start um, trying trying some new new systems out and, yeah, and, I mean, and seeing what, what's been developed for them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're quite a bit more, you know, graphically enhanced and not sound advanced because they use Pokey, but graphically enhanced than the you know 7800 and 2600. So yes. it's an interesting realm to get into. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get Al back from Atari Age because the original video that we had him on with no sound, it was terrible. But we've got that all solved now and he'll look much better, <laughs> much better. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> and he can show off some of the uh, prizes that we'll be giving out. So actually I should get him calling right now so we can get that moving. And uh, yeah. Hopefully we can just erase the original one from our minds and start over. I'll erase it in the recorded video. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, now we can completely blame uh, the video on, on Al. <laughs> He's all blocky. No. Oh, oh we've, we've got audio and video. Hooray. Hooray. Well, the, the, the video doesn't look great for me, but the audio looks... Yeah, it's 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 totally adequate. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, very decent. Very decent. And we get a good view of your uh, your workshop. It is that's a that's a bunch of monitors. I guess those are the ones that go to PRGE and the other uh, conventions. Yeah, I have a, I probably have twenty, twenty five Commodore seventeen oh twos and just I just have six or seven, eight, no, eight in here. Yeah. Uh, and they I, there are different systems connected to each of the each of them. Nice. I've got some of them on right now, but Nice. Uh, yeah, so this is the main work area where I actually build the games. Uh, this is just one of a few different rooms that I use to, for the Atari Age stuff. Uh, but I'm not going to give you a walking tour right now. <laughs> one day. Not today, but one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, this video is much better. So now we can actually show off. Uh, do, you, do you have like the signs and the, the mugs? and? Oh, those are nice. Yeah, oh. are, you can see they've got some... You know, they're not just flat signs. They've got some 3D affected on there with the, with the materials. Wow. Uh, but again, Crazy Climate and the Forum, did a fantastic job with these, and I have a whole bunch of them. And I've not distributed too many yet, so this will be the largest 
number that I'll be sending out five for the, the, the top five yeah. uh, prize. And then I've got, you know, there's, these, there's a little bit of a drink left in that. There's, <laughs> there's one that's not. So, you know, Atari 8 shot glass, or not shot glass, but you know, shot glasses also. Nice. But uh, pint glasses, it's kind of yes. hard. I'm looking at it looks reversed in my feet. I don't know how it shows. There, it, it looks perfect here. Cool. And uh, the other thing I was going to show up just really briefly, uh, new boxes for all the games. Nice. So I have I have everything. Oh, yeah, what's that? Oh, that's the one there. <laughs> Pit cat. Nice. Very nice. So, so, yeah, so basically I have all the boxes except for Adventure 2, but they ate it, and Robot City because the printer has to redo those. So uh, that one takes too long. Tower of Rubble, which is beautiful. Gorgeous. Thank you, Dave Drive. Gorgeous. Scramble, speaking of play soft, this is the Atari 8-bit version of the 5200 game we already have in the store. We had to come up with a different color scheme. Like the 5200, we used blue for the for the uh, highlights, but you know, the title and everything else. So we decided to go with, you know, kind of a purple color for the, for the Atari 8-bit game. Because there'll be more than just this. Now that we have good source of Atari 8-bit shells, nice. uh, I'll be you know, actively publishing and going after a, a lot more homebrew games because again, there's some fantastic games on that platform. Oh yeah, was we just Atari, saw. Uh, yeah, Atari 800 XL was my very first computer that I had as a kid. I saved up a ton of money doing uh, paper routes and shoveling snow in the winter, mowing lawns. Went to Toys R Us and bought the uh, bought an 800 XL 1050 drive and a 1030 modem for those glass display cases in Toys R Us. Uh, and you know, then learned how to program in BASIC and assembly and. You know, and ran DBS on those systems for years. So they, you know, they have a, you know, I, I love the Atari, but my favorite computer. Yeah. Ninja mm. Sky. Nice. Let's see the end here. You know, David X. Gorgeous, gorgeous. You know, beautiful artwork. Yeah. Magical Fairy Force. Very nice. One of the two fifty two hundred games <laughs> that made it out last year. Yeah. And uh, of course, Zookeeper. Yep. Very which nice. Absolutely. Again, Nathan, just amazing job with that. Oh yeah. Avalanche. Nice. Another from Dave Exton. Yeah, that came out really nice. Yeah, that guy's in danger. <laughs> Dave Dragon's Cash, which nice. is beautiful. It's one of the first original homebrew games that we've you know have been able to produce uh, our, you know, uh, packaging for versus a lot of the ports. Mm. Panic Rooms. Yeah. Another Atari style box. Nice. Another from Nathan. Mm. Again, he does such an amazing job reproducing these Coleco games. This will be the third one now that we've done. Oh, wow. Uh, and this one, you know, a little more liberty was able to be taken with it, you know, based on reloaded. Yeah. Will that be one uh, yeah. with uh, the Coleco cartridges? Are you doing that again? Oh, no. No. <laughs> just, those Coleco shells are, are, to be frank, just such a huge pain in the ass to work with. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to find them clean. They're an off white color. Yeah. And after 40 years of these cartridges being out in the wild, you don't find too many that are still clean or don't have scratches or whatever all over them. Yeah. And then removing the labels is a big pain in the neck as well. Yeah. Uh, we did 100 copies of that, uh, the uh, Ladybug? Ladybug Collector's Edition. And uh, with those, we, went all, we had a lot of fun with that. There were unique binaries uh, for each game. And, you know, I used an old, one of those old Dymo stamp uh, labelers. Nice. Where, you know, it made the impressions. Yes. In the, the, like the plastic tape. That's right. And uh, put, put the number on the back of the cartridge and in the, the top flap when you open the box up. So that was fun, but unless I can get a really good source of new Coleco, sh or Coleco shells that are in great condition, yeah. it's just really hard to support doing games with the Coleco shells. Daredevil, I saw someone in the chat talking about this, uh, yeah. the packaging before. Amazing, Atari Boy, 2600 on the forum, you know, does just a great job of, of mimicking the uh, the uh, Activision packaging. And this is the second Muddy, Muddy Vision game. Yeah, Tire uh, Tracks. That uses Tire first. Tracks, yeah, was the first. And I don't know if I show that one before. And Hugo Hunt nice. also is a puzzle game. I love puzzle games, so I, I, you know, I'm going to publish every one of those that I, that I enjoy. That's a tough one. Want it for, but... <laughs> Pardon me? And that... this is not in the official in the store at this time, but we'll yeah. have more details on that later. Yep, yep. Pit Cat's an amazing, amazing game. So looking yeah. forward to that one. So, thanks for giving me an opportunity to actually come on here again where I could be seen and heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technology, huh? <laughs> yeah, not just a bunch of bossy, you know, pixels. <laughs> so like we're using what was that real player or whatever from the oh, you know years oh, ago that's what that reminded me of oh yeah. terrible terrible yeah you have 320 by 200 image size <laughs> not good and buffering yeah. don't forget the buffering oh yeah. that's a buffering 
<laughs> well, thank you so much once again for uh, sponsoring the third uh, the Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, we literally couldn't do it without you and the forum and all the support um, that you give. Well, thank you for coming up with the, the, the awards. And I know it's an incredible amount of work to prepare for these and organize everything every year. Uh, you know, I'm glad that you, know, you, can, you can use the forum uh, as, a, as a tool yeah. to that end. And of course, digging through the forum to find all the homework games. Yeah, exactly. So, and you know, of course, all the amazing people creating you know the, the games, the artwork, and uh, the sound, and just everything that goes into them is just really remarkable as far as the community goes. Uh, yeah. You know, if we could just go back in time with all these games, I have a time machine, go back to the <laughs> early eighties. Millionaires, millionaires, <laughs> all of us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It, it's just astounding, and, and when you see you know some of the original programmers see some of these games, they just they're dumbfounded uh, oh. by the quality of them. Yeah, I mean, they're just that remarkable. Yeah, using the same hardware and getting this kind of quality out of them, I, I can imagine them yeah. just not even fathoming like how is this possible? How did you do this? Yeah. It's a cartridge going in the twenty six hundred, and out comes this. Yeah, it's it's astounding. Yeah, it's fun at a show like Portland Retro Gaming Expo. And by the way, I missed you there last year. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's remarkable seeing you know some of these older you know Atari alumni or activists or whatever coming into the booth and looking at some of the games. <laughs> it's so fun. And, uh, and watching them play them, yeah, it's always fun. Yeah, yeah, it's it sucks that it didn't happen this year, and I I, know. I hope it'll happen this year, but I still I don't know. We'll see. We'll hope. Yeah. Keep our fingers I crossed. Either. I think I think they'll have to make a decision fairly soon because yeah. there's a lot of effort on their part to prepare for the show, and then of course vendors. Yeah. Who to make plans, and they want to sell tickets to people, and people to make travel plans for coming up out of town. Yeah. So I expect fairly soon, within a month or two, they'll probably have to, to publicly announce whether the show is going forward or not. Yeah, it's definitely a highlight of our year to travel down to Portland yeah. and mm -hmm. see you guys, and just take a look at all the homebrew and meet everyone. It's it's a lot of fun. So yeah. I hope it happens. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a ton of work. Yeah. Uh, leading up for me, leading up to the show, but once I'm there. I sympathize. In place and I can stop <laughs> panicking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, then it's, it's a ton of fun. I really do enjoy it. And those guys put on just an amazing show, and it's all volunteer-based, yeah. too. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's massive and really yeah. well-run, so I'm looking forward to it. Whenever it yeah, happens again. Yeah. yeah. So exactly. thanks, thanks I again. I look forward to seeing you again there. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you, too. And uh, thanks once again for, for helping out in, with everything you do and just doing everything you do. It's, it's just a huge list that I can't even uh, imagine <laughs> doing well, myself. I enjoy it. Yeah. And yeah. thank you also. Yeah. It's it's a labor of, labor of love for all of us, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks so much, Al. And right. we'll talk to you thank soon. You. Take care. Yep, bye-bye. Bye. So I'm glad we were able to fit that in yeah. and get Al back on here. So we have three left. These are uh, some of the big hitters. The next one up is Lifetime. Achievement Award. It's pretty, pretty. That is a big one. Big, yes. Um, this was voted on exclusively by the nomination committee um, because the nomination committee is made up of long-time uh, uh, community members. So they know the full history of these people that they have, have nominated and then voted on. So they're, they really know what these people have contributed over decades, literally, some of these people. And, and coincidentally, Al was a recipient last year mm -hmm. of the Lifetime Achievement Award and well-deserved. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, let's, uh, let's find out uh, who the nomination committee mo voted for. There's no nominees. Like, we don't say the nominees. But this is the winner of the a Lifetime Achievement Award. So the winner of nope, the... Nope, there is a video. Oh. Yep, it's short. Lifetime Achievement Award. Okay, and the winner for the Lifetime Achievement Award is Stephen Anthony. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I can hear. Mine, mine stopped. Where's the... Oh. The charger. Oh, you can just leave it. We're almost done. Let's see if we can get Stephen Anthony on the line. Yeah. 
He's the maintainer of Stella. Ah. If you didn't know. Um, oh, here we go. Hello? Hello, Stephen. How are Sorry, you doing? I didn't realize which button to press to uh, connect. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry. okay. It's it's fun doing it live and seeing how, how it goes. So, um, just waiting for the video to kick in. So Can I see the video on my end? No, I don't see you yet. So okay. just, oh, here we go. Excellent. So congratulations, Steve. Uh, well deserved. I mean, if people don't know, uh, you're the, I guess, central hub, the maintainer of Stella. Yep, since uh, 2004 or so. I started working on it in 2000, 2001, and I became the maintainer in 2004. So, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> and pretty much... Eight years or so at this point, I guess. Yeah, pretty much your work on Stella has, I would say, touched every single homebrew that we have talked about tonight for 2600. Um, people uh, develop their games with it, they play the games on it, they do troubleshooting with Stella, um, you know, it can, you can do step-by-step -step, uh, running through the program, visually seeing it, looking at the code, turning on and off um, different elements of the game. Uh, you can even input fake joystick inputs so as you're running through the game. And I, I, I am so certain that your contribution has uh, to the Atari 2600 community has, has touched every single person that is watch, watching right now. So as I just personally want to thank you. And I would say it's well-deserved, this lifetime achievement. Just as you said, you've put in decades of work into this. Yeah, I'd say... I I stopped counting after a time, but it was, it's must be tens of thousands of hours at this point. <laughs> Easily. I just, you know, past the year, past two or three years, I just stopped counting. But yeah, it is a lot of work, definitely. So um, just tell me, tell, briefly describe what, what you do um, with Stella, how, how you maintain it, and maybe some of the people you interact with and, and how they contribute and you organize it. Uh, well, we just keep track of the bug reports to come in. Uh, every time we do a new release, there's usually bug reports associated with it, of course. Yeah. So it's myself, uh, Thomas Yench, is it? Sorry, Thomas. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. And also uh, Christian Speckner, Dirty Harry, and Terry H. So that's the... First of all, I apologize. This is my first time doing a live video, so I may be a bit nervous. And I, and I thank you so much for honoring us with, with your very first video appearance. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so, yeah, the three of us uh, just coordinate what work we're, we're going to do amongst ourselves. Some of us uh, are stronger in certain areas than others, so we, we divvy up the work, basically. And, yeah. That's excellent. So, um, so, I mean, we were working on this stuff uh, right up until, well, for me at least, this morning even before it's just, <laughs> just uh, so Thomas just committed a fix for Quad Terry, yep. Quad Terry controller, and I'm working on the jack adapter support, there's an issue with that. The Quad Terry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and what I was saying, the jack adapter is, uh, someone reported a bug with it, so uh, I just got a sample hardware in the mail a couple of days ago, so I just got some Thomas phoning to work on that. So yeah, we're off and on. I'd say at least every every second day we're in communication and, and working on something. So. Yeah, well that's that's just just incredible. Like I I personally use Stella every day <laughs> because I, I you know I recorded all the videos that you've seen that you people have been seeing tonight um, for the intros on Stella. Um, and it has so many options that you can emulate CRTs and it's just endless, endless options. And I keep finding out new ones every day that are, that can help me do what I do on zero page homebrew. And I'm sure every developer can say the same thing about Stella, that it just helps them immensely. So congratulations mm -hmm. once again for your lifetime uh, achievement award. And we'll, we'll send out your, uh, your yeah. award to you. Sir? Yeah. No, I, I just, uh, yeah. I just wanted to add that some of the videos you did, uh, you probably could have used phosphor mode. 
There was some flickering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was under time constraints. I, I like recorded them at 60 and then I had to do interpolation of video and it's, it's like, yeah, there were, you, you saw some disappearing, um, disappearing things. So yeah, I knew somebody would catch that. It, it was on, uh, it, it was on uh, Thomas Yench's game. That was, it was most noticeable. <laughs> I'm sure he'll give me a hack. <laughs> thing. Uh, I wanted to single out uh, Christian in particular, Christian Spechner, so Dirty Harry, because uh, when we did, or when you did the Stellathon a couple of years ago, yeah. I, I was interviewed, and unfortunately I didn't do a live interview at that point, and Thomas was interviewed of course, yeah. but we forgot to mention Dirty Harry. So right, yeah. Shout out to, uh, to Christian if you're watching. I know yeah. it's late where he is in Germany at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully he is watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so g- congratulations to everyone who, who works on Stella as, as well, because it's, as I've said numerous times, it's all a community effort, mm-hmm. and and I mean, we focus on certain people here, but it is it is a big community, mm-hmm. and everybody contributes, but um, they focused the laser on you today, <laughs> and, and so okay. congratulations again for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, um, I just want to say thanks for the award, thanks to... Uh, Whoever the nominations, whoever the people, you know, nominated yeah. it. Thank you for that. And uh, I just want to throw in thanks to Al as well, because uh, as someone mentioned earlier in your stream, uh, we use Atari Age for uh, bug reports and releases, and basically all communication, almost all communication goes to Atari Age. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, being on today, and, and congratulations again, and we'll talk with you soon. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Steve. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Excellent. Well, well deserved. It's it's so hard. I, I was looking at the list of nominees uh, for Lifetime Achievement Award, and every single person that was was nominated internally yes. uh, is well deserving of yes. it. Yes. And yes. So yes. it it's so hard to say who who is the most deserving. Let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have two awards left. And these are the big ones. These are the 2600 best homebrews. These are ports and original. And the first one up is Atari 2600 best homebrew port. Atari 2600 best completed homebrew port. Avalanche by John Champeau, Code and Design. Thomas Yench. Additional coding and optimizations, Nathan Strum, graphics, and David Exton, packaging, illustration, and design. B Blocks by Jeff Haber and Jeremiah Knoll. KitKat by Marco Johannes Programming, Diefed Hitchings Produced, Charmheel Desir Drawn Artwork. Robot City by Thomas Yench, Game Design and Programming, and David Exton, Illustration and Manual Design. Tower of Rubble by Dion Olsthorn, Programming and Manual, and Dave Dries, Label and Box Artwork. Zookeeper by John Champeau, Code and Design, Nathan Strum, Graphics, Robert Vieira, Music and Sound Effects, Thomas Yench, Music and Sound Effects Code, Lee Kebler, Additional Music and Testing, and Nathan Strum, Packaging, Illustration, and Design. All right, so... Here's the actual award. There's the we haven't award. been bringing them out, uh, this is the one. Atari 2600, Best Completed Homebrew Port. This is where we need the drum roll. 
What are you doing? Oh, I just didn't have <laughs> the winners queued up yet. Uh, okay, so in third place, we have Tower of Rubble by Dion Olsthorne. And in second place, we have Pit Cat by Marco Johannes and Daphid Hitchens. And the winner, Zookeeper by John Champo. There we go. Welcome, John. Congratulations. Hey, thanks. How's it going? <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> How are you doing today? Oh, pretty good. So, Great show, by the way. Well, thank you. We, we've upped the game, but also kept all the technical difficulties yeah. in, intact. You know, you've got to yeah, have perfect. them. Yeah, exactly. Every year you have more technical difficulties. It's perfect. It's yeah. like ramping up. <laughs> exactly. The, the, the better it looks, the more technical difficulties. But we've, yeah. we've ironed it out in the end. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Excellent. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, say thanks um, for the award. It's uh, quite an honor. Um, surprising, but certainly uh, it's definitely a, it's a very competitive field this year. And uh, yeah. um, very, very um, happy. I want to say thanks to everyone for their vote. Uh, recognizing zookeeper so um also wanted uh, to say um thanks to all the people involved um typically a champ game um there's a lot of people that um come on board the uh, community is very very uh, helpful and uh always willing to put in their expertise to try to make these games as best as possible so definitely want to say thanks to everyone um nathan of course my right hand man nathan <laughs> he's always there for me and uh zookeeper is uh no difference. I, I don't think he was a new of Zookeeper or was a big fan when this, this all started. Um, as he described in his acceptance, and congratulations, Nathan, for uh, yeah. the um, greatest uh, for, for winning the graphics award. Yeah. It all started with just a little line between a couple of play field dots. I'm like, ah, let's make Zookeeper. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was that was fun. And of course, Nathan always helps with um, the gameplay design as well. So it just keeps, gets me going when the uh, sent me the sprites and uh, um, that inspires me to keep going so um, so thank you Nathan for everything and certainly for Zookeeper as well I um, want to thank uh, Robert Vieira he's not actually on the call um, but he for those who don't know he's, he's a programmer for I think he was for um, Atari back in the day um, he actually made these sounds um, mm -hmm. and they were recovered um, um, while I'm thanking Robert, I want to also thank Ken, um, who was a Dutchman in 2000 on the Atari Age. Um, he's the one that secured the actual ROM and um, gave me permission to use the sounds in the game. So that was extremely helpful. Once I know that the sounds are available, that also inspires me to keep going because that's the most you know, difficult part for me. So thank you for those two. And also Tom as well, Tom Yens. Um, Tom took that ROM and actually developed a, a sound driver that I use for the basis to play um, um, the sounds of Zookeeper. So thank you, TJ, for that as well. Um, also want to say thank Lee and Kebler. Um, as, as you know, congratulations, Lee, also for the award for the sound of music. Um, as good of a job as Robert did, he did leave out a couple of tunes, probably <laughs> because they weren't going to use them um, or wouldn't have had the space back then. So and that was the Lion tune, um, the Lion theme, which came up excellent, and also the Neil Bugs tune. So. Um, Lee really helped me out. I was stressed out for like a year. This, the development cycle on Zookeeper was about two years. So for about a year there, I was stressed like, how am I going to actually get these uh, last two sounds done? And, and he came through. And also it was very helpful with the testing and everything with that. So, so anyway, as you can see, it's a pretty big team that worked on this game. And uh, it's a long development cycle. And so I'm very pleased to have it completed. And thanks for everyone for their support. Um, the last, last but also not least, I want to do a shout out to Al um, for all he does at Atari Age. Um, I always put a lot of work on display uh, with all the games that uh, I, I put out, and he always uh, graciously accepts uh, those challenges, and Zookeeper was no, no different. Um, Nathan, of course, did the wonderful artwork for that, and uh, um, Al spends all his time wrestling with the printers to make sure that those uh, boxes and cartridges and manuals all get out to everyone. So thank you all for everything. And last but not least, of course, you guys, um, we're going to have a zero page over, not only for the show, but also um, for all the time you put in um, demoing the games, playing the games with feedback. Um, that certainly is 
as everyone knows, uh, the last 10% of the game is always the most difficult. So to see people enjoying the game, especially you guys and the feedback, um, that really inspires me to complete something and bring it down to uh, fruition. So thank you to, to you and thank you to everyone. So yeah. very honored to <laughs> support. Thank great, you. great, great job, John. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be getting one of those uh, awesome Atari Age round metal signs. I'm very, very jealous. Those, those yeah. look awesome. That is awesome because I real I I lost my frisbee last year, so this is going to work out perfect. Thank you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I see it on the roof of your house in the near future. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to talk to Maureen about that one, but yeah, it'll be somewhere, probably on the shed or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. So. Yeah. So congratulations, great job, Zookeeper is an astounding accomplishment and and. Quite oh, a, such quite a fun a game. game to play too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy, Thank you crazy for, game. for letting us play your game because yes, it's just so much fun absolutely. to play on, on live stream. So yeah, yeah. and debuting all your games. And, all right, you're uh, welcome. Oh, there's, there's plenty more to come. And, uh, oh yeah. Much, so. You've got awesome. a list like that of up, <laughs> yes. up, upcoming games. It's it's crazy. <laughs> absolutely. Intimidating. So, yeah. so thank you, and uh, okay. we will talk with you soon, John. Excellent. Thanks, okay. guys. Bye, bye, bye. bye everyone. Thank you. So we have just one more. We've come to the end. And this is uh, Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original. That was for Port. This is original concept. Um, so here are the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original. Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Original. Asteroids Attack by Ricardo Pym. Cannonhead Clash by Blue Swimmer. Code in Design. Vladimir Zuniga. Label, Manual, and Box Design. Doggone It by Andrew Polly, Game Programming and Graphics, Herbie Holler, Cartridge Label, Manual and Box Design, Charles Aikens, Illustrations. I Ran by Vladimir Zuniga. Ninja Sky in Low Res World by Vladimir Zuniga. Unholy by Leonardo Santiago and Vladimir Zuniga Packaging Art. In third place, Unholy by Leonardo Santiago. In second place, Ninjish Guy in Low Res World by Vladimir Zuniga. And the winner is for Atari 2600 Best Completed Homebrew Original, <coughs> Doggone It by Andrew Pauly. Welcome, Her Andrew, congrats. and congratulations. <laughs> First off, uh, don't have me following John Shanto anymore because <laughs> he's a hard act to follow. Oh yeah, it's in he's intimidating. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just to say the least. Um, this was a real shock to me. I, I didn't think this was even possible. And, and when I look at all the other games, any one of those can be the center of somebody's homebrew collection. Yeah. Um, and I have a, a, a suggestion. I think you actually mentioned this on a previous show. Is you need to have a VHZC category. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know. He makes like 10 a year. It's crazy. And, you know, when he does all the packaging, it's just amazing. And I think Leonardo, I, I think that was his first game. Yep. Uh, it was crazy. And, you know, I still say Blue Summer's Cannonhead Clash is going to be the hit of parties. <laughs> um, 
you know, Asteroids Attack. I'm not very good at it, but it's good. Uh, I love the boss levels. Um, I mean, just, just what a great group of games to be associated with. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, I know a lot of people, maybe not everybody's followed Dog on it, and I appreciate it. Um, and Dog on it was developed as a way to say thank you for people to help me with uh, my cancer experience. Um, I don't want to go into too much of the details, or, you know, it's all on the forum if you want to go and read about it. But basically, each of the three levels features people and places that you know played a prominent role in my journey. And the dogs, even though they're kind of based on some real stuff, it was just a way to kind of join them all together in a, a cohesive game. You know, Dogon was a success. Um, you know, not compared to any other games, it was a, su a success because it achieved what I intended it for it to do, which was to say thank you. And, you know, as I was recovering, you know, I, what really haunted me is how do you say thank you to these people, you know, to the family that allowed my family to stay with them for seven weeks as I got treatments out of state. You know, how do you say thank you to the doctor that operated on you for 11 hours and calls it just another day at the office? You know, how do you say thank you to the doctor that carefully crafted a treatment plan to eradicate sickness from a body? And how do you say thank you to a company that Support you unconditionally and welcome you back when you're well enough to work again. You know, as much as winning, you know, winning this award is a distinguished honor and one that I always hold dear, but what was more rewarding was being able to look all those people in the eye and say, I made this game for you. And that's how I said thank you. And you know, what I want to express to all the Atari community that's been talked about this whole show is Doggone it would not be possible without the Atari community. And I cannot thank each and every one of you enough for helping me say thank you. And I thought about listing everybody I come in contact with, but I know James will start rolling the music and <laughs> everybody wants to go home. But there's so many people that I've come into contact with, people that reached out to me, people that helped. Um, and I, I really want to say them some names, but I know I'm forgetting them all. So, um, you know, thank you guys for putting on the show. It's great. You know, tune in when I can. You know, during the week, it's hard because it's late. I gotta get to work. I'm on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just getting dark here now. Uh, I just want to wrap up. Um, you know, this past fall, I, I try to read, even though I, I'm a self-described nerd. I try to read. Um, this past fall, at the um, suggestion of my wife, I read The Yearling. If you haven't read that book, it's great. It's classic. Um, and towards the end, there's the father of the book is having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his son about life. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit because it's in, you know, kind of backcountry dialect. But basically he says, everyone wants life to be a fine thing and easy. It's fine, powerful fine, but it ain't easy. And, you know, situations for me haven't been easy, but I can't imagine a, a finer life. And, you know, what... My cancer journey has it's become part of my identity, and I cannot shake that. I'll never be able to not be associated with it. But what I want to express to the community is, you know, my homebrew development experience has made Atari as part of my identity as well, and that's something I'm always going to cling to. So thank you again to everybody. Uh, thank you for allowing me to share my story, for this recognition, and this is especially helping me to say thank you in the way that was truly meaningful I'll be forever grateful so thank you well thank you so much Andrew it's it, it's an amazing game and especially considering it's it was packed into 4k and it and it won for best homebrew 2600 <laughs> it, there's just layers and layers upon layers of of uh, accomplishments in here mm -hmm. within yourself and your story and the and the game resulting in the game as well um, so con congratulations on, on everything you. and, and your recovery as yes. well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've been thinking about another game, but all I would say is be gentle. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, and I look at last year's 4K winner, you know, Dean Noy's Amoeba Jump, and then he comes out with Tower Rubble. <laughs> and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, that's fine. So. <laughs> We'll enjoy it all the same. We will. Whatever, whatever you come up with, we'll play and we'll, we'll uh, enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, 
yeah, we yeah. hope to see more of your games in, yeah. in on Zero Page. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, James, I'm hopefully going to come up with a shooter for you. So, <laughs> ah, excellent. You're dear to my heart. <laughs> Platformers and shooters, I love them. So, thank you so much and congratulations. Sorry, I cut you off. Thanks. No, I don't say thanks for the show. Oh. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the technical difficulties, you know, it's real life. And, uh, yeah, it makes it fun. It makes it fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so thanks once again and congratulations on, on your awards today. And uh, and uh, we will talk with you soon. Yep. See Thank you. you. Bye-bye. And thank you for staying with us this whole time. And um, we have some great shows coming up on Zero Page Homebrew in the next couple of weeks. A big, big one on the first show back after the awards. Where did my little device go? Here it is. Uh, the Quadtari by Nathan Tolbert, mm -hmm. um, which is also already supported on Stella, <laughs> the games, and made a, a bunch of games are made by Nathan Strum, um, not Nathan Strum, John Champeau. Mm -hmm. um, so we will be doing a Quadtari special next Friday, and where we'll be playing uh, a three exclusive premieres mm -hmm. on that show. One is the Quad Games, made by Nathan Tolbert as kind of a demo game, which is four games in one for the four different uh, ports. <laughs> and uh, we also have an unannounced Quad Tari game that's not been discussed on the forum that will be premiering. And we'll also pr be premiering Ladybug Arcade, the new game by John Champeau, which Very he has nice. not released any video of yet. Um, we'll also be going back and playing all the supported games on Galagon uh, on the show. Galagon, Wizard of War Arcade, Robot, Robot War 2684, and Gorf Arcade. So we'll be giving this a good try on the show and see how it plays. I don't know if my controller from Atlantin will be here at that time. I Fingers hope. Crossed. Oh my god, that would be so good for, <laughs> for Robot War 2684. Yeah. That would be a good demo for it. Um, then we'll be playing Popeye in the next one after that, an exclusive update on that. Uh, the show after that, we have Night Guy and Low Res World Castle Days, the exclusive final binary nice. of that for the 2600. Um, we have Space Pac-Man, an exclusive update on that. And uh, we have a whole bunch of uh, unannounced events coming up as well that I can't talk about, but they'll be coming up very, very soon. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure to tune in to Zero Page Homebrew coming up. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we uh, broadcast Tuesdays and Fridays. I don't know if anybody's tuned in for this that doesn't watch the show, but that's what we do. Um, and uh, we'll be getting the Dragonfly cartridge soon as well. That's for the 7800. So we'll be playing that on one of the shows. And uh, the results of all the votes will be revealed later today or tomorrow. So you'll be getting to see all the breakdowns. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and who voted for what, if you're interested. Don't know if that matters to anyone, but a lot of people we'll seem there. interested in that. So we're revealing that. And that's it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, all the developers, all the people who watch. Oh, so much. And Erlen. We're <laughs> almost sacrificing his camera to the <laughs> electronic gods, uh, but he, it, it was recovered. It works fine. Um, put your hand in front of the camera and, and wave hello. There we go. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> That's Erilyn for you. Yeah. That's all you get. <laughs> um, I want to thank Tanya, of course, for being my uh, co-host today. Well, it's been an interesting and year. for the year as well. Yeah. Um, during lockdown. From, from doing, you know, one out of every four um, zero-page episodes to pretty much doing every single one in 2020 it was, was quite yes. a ramp up. But yeah, four I've times as it. many. <laughs> I've enjoyed it a lot, and I've get to, I get to play a lot more games and see their development over time, too, because I'm, I'm playing yeah. the new iterations and... Uh, I've had it, it's, you know, it's been a rough year. It's been a rough year for a lot of people and a lot of people in the forums. Mm -hmm. and, it has, yeah. Um, uh, so hang in there. Hang in there, but I have really felt like the Zero Page community has um, been a place of, of people rallying together and, yeah. and, and you can take innovating your mind. and making games. and You can take your mind off things and, yeah. and, and play games and discuss games with people and not worry about other things for just a little bit maybe. Well, and I've grown to really enjoy, I'm mean, not that I didn't before, but really enjoy, you know, the twice a week kind of <laughs> yeah. playing games and touching base with people and seeing the same people in the chats That's all the like, time. That it's been really, that that really nice to, to connect with people. So it's been a good year for that. 
yeah. you know, if not for everything, but for that for sure. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, everybody's saying great show, and uh, and Azure Six Five Zero Two is here for the Flame Wars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm glad everybody enjoyed the show this year, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, next year's <laughs> fourth annual Atari Homebrew Awards. I'm yeah. gonna have to start way earlier preparing things. I was doing things like literally up to the last minute today, getting things ready. And yet you started working on it in the summer, so I don't know how you start earlier than that. Yeah, start some things earlier. Oh my God, it's crazy. It takes a long time to do this. Yeah. But um, I'm glad it worked out in the end and it looked good and sounded good. Mm -hmm. And um, Start tomorrow, James. Start tomorrow. Alert, literally, I, I will be because we'll be t discussing how it went <laughs> tomorrow to change things for next year. I see. Um, but thanks for hanging in there with us and thanks for watching and enjoying and uh, make sure you play all these games and support these homebrew, homebrew developers. A lot of these games are coming out on, in box form on cartridge soon. You saw the packaging, so they'll be coming out very soon. A lot of them are actually available at the Atari Age store mm -hmm. uh, for pre-order. So there you go. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next Friday for the first show back. Bye-bye everyone. <laughs>